So, elections in which you need to participate. The first thing to remember or to understand is the, the geographic um, uh, designators that, that govern how things are done within the party. So the first one is the county organization. These are chartered by the state. Um, the organization in each county is the county's central committee. So here in Multnomah, it's the Multnomah County Democratic Central Committee. In Washington County, it's the Washington County Democratic Central Committee. Um, there are... It, it, it varies. There's some of the counties where the populations are really, really small, and so it's not really clear how active they are, but there is a contact person for every one of the counties. So the first thing you need to know is, is your county organization, um, because that, that governs your participation in the party. The second thing you need to know is your congressional district. This uh, some people are not quite as familiar with. We in Oregon have five uh, con congressional districts. Two-thirds of the state is the second congressional district, which is the eastern part of the state. And then we have uh, the smallest one, which is Multnomah County, which uh, or CD2, or excuse me, CD3. And then the other three congressional districts are along the coast. So there are organizational structures within the Democratic Party that are based on these geographic designations. So this is a diagram of how DPO leadership is elected, and I'll be going through this in more detail. This is a slide that shows the overall uh, structure. So as you can see, the foundation of the Democratic Party is the precinct committee person, and they elect three groups of people. They elect delegates to the DPO state central committee. They elect county officers, which is a chair, one or more vice chairs, a treasurer, and a secretary for the county and then they elect delegates to the congressional district committees. The delegates to the state central committee then are the, elect uh, three groups of people. Uh, every four years, they elect the three DNC members. They elect, every two years, they elect the Democratic Party of Oregon chair, two vice chairs, and a secretary. And then they also participate in the election of members of the standing committees within the Democratic Party of Oregon. And there's uh, five or six committees. There are three that are very, very important. Uh, one of them is the uh, Platform and Resolutions Committee, which is where the resolutions are crafted and then they're passed to the floor for a uh, final vote. Um, if any of you listen to NPR and you, 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 you hear about the um, the European Union or the, the, the uh, United Nations passing resolutions, this is the same thing. It's, it's where they pass um, beliefs and ideas that, that, that get expressed. Uh, we have the DPO Rules Committee, which is where the bylaws and um, uh, motions to the, the body uh, pass through. And then we have the DPO Credentials Committee, which is how people get credentialed to participate in the State Central Committee. So they keep a list of all the people who are member, actual designated members of the State Central Committee, and then they are credentialed to vote when they meet every quarter. The delegates to the county district um, uh, elect as well the members of the standing committees. So there's a joint, joint meeting of the respective delegates from the State Central Committee and the elected delegates from the Congressional District to elect the members of the standing committees. And uh, there's a lot of competition to get on to the Platform and Resolutions Committee and the Rules Committee, so, um, uh, because these are such critical committees to be on. So when does this happen? Um, as precinct committee persons, you'll be able to elect <coughs> your county officers. These generally happen um, after the November general election and before the end of the following February. Uh, this is not a, a rule, so there are, uh, there's a one county that, that is completely out of cycle. They, they elected their officers in July of the opposite, of, of the opposite year. Um, and your offices are elected for a two-year term. Um, 
and you'll need to contact your county uh, to find out when your uh, reorganization happens. You have, it is state law that you are notified of this meeting, so they have to tell you that it's, that it's going on. Um, the one rule from the state is that they have to reorganize within 25 months. Um, and uh, that gives them a, a, a month leeway at, in a, in a two-year cycle. They could accelerate that process and, and have a reorganization several months early if the body decides to do so. Any questions on, the, on the, what the precinct committee persons elect? Yes. Reorganize is, is the term used when they elect new officers. So you have the officers and delegates that, that generally have a two-year term, and so the reorganization is the official meeting where they, they either re-elect officers or they elect uh, new, new officers. Any other questions? The Democratic National Committee members are elected by the delegates to the State Central Committee. Uh, currently, we elect three. Um, when Oregon gets um, uh, another uh, congressional district seat, which we expect it to do after the next census, uh, we will be electing four. These elections occur in December after the presidential election, and these are for a four-year term. So this will not happen again until December of 2020. But the Democratic National Committee members are the people who actually go to the Democratic National Committee meetings. They vote for people like Tom Perez, who's the current chair. Uh, the previous chair was Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Um, uh, and then they, they do various other uh, uh, activities within the, the Democratic National Committee. The Democratic Party leadership um, is elected by the State Central Committee. They elect a chair and two vice chairs, one being a male and one being a female, and a secretary. And that happens in the first quarter following the November general election. So that will be coming up uh, between January and March of uh, 2019. Uh, these officers are elected for a two-year term. Um, it's critically important who the chair is. The chair appoints all of the standing committee chairs. Uh, so it's, it's critically important that you have chairs who understand their role and, uh, and are interested in doing the business of the party. Um, the chair and the first vice chair are also DNC members, bringing the total to five. So we have five congressional districts. We have five um, D D DNC members. Any questions on that election? Yes. The question is, can people hold multiple positions? The answer is yes, unless the bylaws forbid it. And the one exception I do know is that the treasurer cannot be a chair of a standing committee. But those are articulated in the, um, uh, the bylaws, and there's nothing in Robert's Rules of Order that prevent people from holding multiple, multiple positions. Other questions? So as I said, the standing committee members are uh, critically important because they are the ones that actually carry out much of the business of the party. Um, they are elected by the five congressional district. The delegates are elected by the five congressional districts, um, along with the, the central committee delegates. Uh, they are also two-year terms, and the elections uh, for these occur within the first quarter after the general election. So uh, the meeting is generally conducted by the congressional district organization, and they invite the delegates to the state central committee who participate in an election. And if you were entitled to participate in that, you should be notified so that you can go and vote. And again, they elect the members of the, of the standing committees.
So qualifications for chairs, and this refers to both county and state. Um, and this is right out of Robert's Rules of Order. So chairs should be chosen for their ability to preside. They should be well versed in parliamentary law. And that means that they comprehend the principles of democracy and that they are familiar with the state statutes and the bylaws. Uh, and that's in Robert's Rules, newly revised, page 449, lines 7 through, 7 through 12. Um, and really, the role of a chair is to follow the will of the majority. Uh, this, the, the democratically run organizations are not like nonprofits where they have a uh, CEO who, who, who runs the ship and makes all the decisions. The role of the chair is really to be uh, unbiased and, um, and really to carry out the will of the people. Any questions? Yes. So the Oregon statutes define how the major and minor political party parties operate. Um, and then, yeah, those are Oregon statutes. And you can find things like the Oregon organization of counties happen to have to happen within every 25 months articulated there. And then the bylaws I was talking about are the bylaws of each of the counties and of the Democratic Party of Oregon. Uh, you can find the bylaws of the Democratic Party of Oregon posted on the DPO website. And if the counties have, you know, comprehensive websites, you can find the bylaws for each of the counties on their website as well.